Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today I'm going to do a solo playthrough of Orléans Invasion doing the solo scenario Capital Verzon. This is the second of the three solo scenarios that the Invasion uh, provides to the Orléans game and I would say it is quite difficult so let's see if we can win. <laughs> If you'd like to see how to set up the game, just check out the video before this in the playlist, and that will show you how to set this one up, because it is a little bit different than all the other games. If not, and you're ready for the playthrough, just keep on watching. Good luck! To start the game, we will look at our first event, and if it has this icon, it means that the event takes place throughout the whole round. And what this means is that this strike, we cannot go and obtain a craftsman from the village this round. For our first round, we only have our four starter workers that we can use. So this time, we're just going to go to the village, and we're going to obtain a boatman. Since we went to the village and we're picking up a boatman, we get to grab a boatman worker. And we'll move up the boatman track. And because above that, there is two coins, we can grab those two coins. And that'll be the end of our first round. Round two, the event is Pilgrimage. We are not able to obtain any monks. Darn! For round two, we're going to be able to activate both the castle and the farmhouse. So let's do the castle first. When we go to the castle, we get to obtain one knight. And we'll move up the knight track. This gets us one step closer to that citizen tile, which I like. But then the other thing we get is we now can draw five from our bag instead of four. Next, let's activate the farmhouse. At the farmhouse, we'll get to grab a farmer and move up the track. And this allows us to get a piece of grain. That grain is going to be worth one VP point. Nice. Round three, the harvest. So now we, at the end of this round, we're going to have to either give up one grain, one wine, or one cheese or give up five coins. For round three, we're going to do the same thing we did for round two. We're going to activate the castle and the farmhouse. So let's do the castle first. Activating the castle will let us get another knight. And now we can draw six from our bag, and we're only two spaces away from that citizen tile. Oh yeah. Next, let's activate the farmhouse. So let's grab another farmer, move up the track, and get another piece of grain. Now we're at the end of round three, so we have to either give up five coins, which we don't have, or grain, wine, or cheese. Well, just so happens, thanks to all of those farmers, we have a piece of grain. So we're going to give that up, and we're going to get going. Round four, it is the Crusades. We can't go to the knights. So, not knights, we can't go to the castle and recruit any knights. They're out crusading. For round four, we're only going to activate the village. However, you may see that there are two of my workers in the university. What we're doing there is we're prepping. We don't have enough of the right workers to actually activate the university, but we're close. <laughs> and so we can place them there so that the next time when we draw, we already have those two set up for the next round. So let's just go to the village. We're going to grab another boatman. So we'll grab that. Then we'll move up the track and get three more coins, which gets us to a total of five coins. That is going to be the end of round four. Round five is income. This is really awesome. We're going to get three coins per the level of, that we are at the, at the development track. Unfortunately, I have not been paying attention to that. <laughs> I should have. So right now I'm at level one, and there's really no way I'm going to get to level two. So probably just going to get three coins. But hey, three coins is better than zero. This round, we're going to ship our merchant as well as go to the university, and we have prepped our village. Don't have another craftsman, but we're close. So we put the boatman and the, and the farmer. They are ready to do it next round. So let's do the shipping first. So before I move my merchant, I do want to mention that I'm playing this on a different night that I did the setup, and I gave up trying to set up all of the goods the same way, so you might see that the goods are in different places than when in the setup video. Sorry about that. But I did a random, so it should be basically the same. I did use the same place tiles, just not the goods where they are. So, <laughs> all right, so I'm going to ship. 
And because I went by Brocade, I get to take that Brocade. That gives me six VP worth of items, which is great, because remember, I need to go to Verzon and give up 12 worth of VP of goods. So I'm halfway there. Next, let's do the university. The university allows me to grab a scholar and move up the scholar track. And because there's two books above there, we're going to be able to move two spaces up the development track. Here's the development track. Let's move up two. That puts us one space away from grabbing our first citizen tile. We are now at the end of round five, and because we are at level one of our development, we get three coins. Round six, we move to Amnesty. Now, Amnesty is a really cool effect. Whenever we uh, grab a worker or recruit one this round, we can actually place it immediately on our board. And if we can then activate an action because we placed it there, we can activate that action this round. So hopefully I can do some chaining here. So for round six, we're going to do some fun stuff here. We're going to go to the monastery to get a monk. Monks are wild. We're going to be able to immediately place that. So then we're going to place it over here with the village. Village then we can activate and then we can get a craftsman. When we get a craftsman, we can place that craftsman at the farmhouse. So then we can activate the farmhouse and get a farmer. And last but not least, we can activate shipping. Oh, this is what I meant by chaining, if you were wondering what I meant by chaining. So let's first do the monastery. The monastery is very simple. You just gain a monk, no tracks, because the monk is wild. That's already good enough. We're then going to place that monk right here in the village so we can activate the village. Going to the village, we're going to grab a craftsman, move up the track, and obtain some technology. Now the technology we can't place till the end of the round, but I will show you how that works shortly. Because we grabbed a craftsman, we'll be able to place them in the farmhouse and then activate the farmhouse. So this time we'll grab a farmer. We move up the track, but we get a piece of cheese now. Cheese is worth two VP points, so with the cheese, the brocade and the grain, we have five, six, seven, eight VP points in goods. Because of amnesty, we can place that, that farmer anywhere we want. I'm going to place it here in the university. I can't activate the university, but at least I already have a worker there. So now all I need to do is draw a craftsman and a trader. Last but not least, let's activate that ship. We're going to be able to take our merchant down to Syracuse. And that got us another piece of brocade, which is great. That gives us a total of 13 victory points. So now we just need to bring those two, those 12, over to Verzon, which is only two spaces away, one road and one waterway. Now before the end of the round, we get to place this piece of technology that we are able to obtain because we got a craftsman. And where I think we're going to place it is in the guild hall area. The first time you place technology, it has to be in a farmer's spot. So I'd prefer not to be there, I'd prefer to be somewhere else, but I've got to do the farmer spot. So I'm doing the farmer spot on the guild hall. That should end round six. Round seven, you guys, after this, we're halfway through, and now we're starting to have some bad events. The plague. We have to draw a worker from our bag. If it's not a starter worker, we have to put it back on the board and give it away. This round, we're going to activate three spots, the university, the village, and the scriptorium. So let's do the scriptorium first. For the scriptorium, you just move one up the development track. That means we have obtained our first citizen tile. Yes. Next, let's activate our university. Now notice I'm using a monk. I'm using a monk as a trader, so you can use him as anything that you want on the board. Pretty cool. So with that, we'll grab a scholar, move up the track, and because there's three books above that, go up three spaces on the development track. One more space on there and we can get some coins. Last but certainly not least, let's activate the village. This time we're getting our first trader. And when we move up that track, we get to grab a place tile, a level one place tile. 
The good style that we're going to choose is the herb garden. The herb garden is going to make our boatman wild for any of the four basic characters. The boatman, craftsman, trader, or the fi uh, farmer. It can be any one of those. All right, now it's plague time. Let's grab one random worker from our bag. Oh, we lost a knight. So that knight now goes back on the supply. We can recruit him again if we're able. Round eight, sabotage. Any spot that we have on our board that has one of the technology tiles, we cannot use this round. Bummer. Looks like for this round, we're just gonna activate two spots, the village and the monastery. So let's do the village first. You can probably guess what I'm gonna get, a boatman. They're wild and they're gonna give me four coins. That means I now have 12 coins. I can now pay the 10 required by round nine. Whew, close one. The second I'm gonna activate is the monastery. Let's grab another monk, shall we? All right, we're at the start of round nine. We have to pay 10 coins. So those are our 10. We now only have two left. But that completes our first objective. So on here, we'll place one of those red uh, tokens to denote that we have completed that. Now at the end of this round, we have to pay one coin for every two goods that we have. And we have one, two, three, we have four goods, that's two coins. We lose all of our coins. So I'm hoping we can get to Verzon and drop off all of those goods for the 12 VP that we need there so we don't have to pay that. Let's see if we can do it. Well, look at that, you guys. Drawing six plus having the one that I left from last round right here for shipping means that I can activate both the ship and the wagon. We're gonna be able to do this. So let's activate the wagon first. We'll move our, our merchant to Burgi. We get to get that uh, grain token as well. Next, let's do some shipping. This is gonna allow us to go to Verzon and pick up that wool. And while we're here, let's pay our 12 VP. Brocade is five. Cheese is two, so that's seven. Wool is four, that's 11. And grain is one, 12. Yes! That means objective three is complete. Only three more to go. So at the end of this round, we look to see how many goods we have. We have two left, so that means we have to give up one coin. Kind of a bummer, because now we only have one coin left. Something that I've been completely neglecting are trading posts. I don't think I've even put one on the board yet. If I can get one on the board this round, I can get two coins. Looks like we're only going to be able to activate two spots, the castle and the village. So let's do the castle first. Let's grab ourselves a knight and be able to draw seven around. And we're only one away from that wonderful citizen tile, which we need badly. What do you say we go to the village and grab our last boatman? What do you guys think? All right, here it is, last boatman. And we'll get five coins. That puts our coins up to six. However, we're never going to be able to get that citizen tile. That's just out of reach. So unfair. Well, you guys saw how many guilds I just made. Uh, zero, right? <laughs> Bummer, so that's okay. I get no coins. Let's move to the next round. This round, all of our scholars are in a conference. And as we all know, when you're in a conference, you're totally 100% unavailable. So we can't go and recruit any of those. All right, you guys, Colin is running out of time here, but he might have a plan. So we're gonna activate the castle, the village, and the monastery this round. Let's do the castle. Let's go get that citizen tile. That puts us at two citizen tiles. Yes. Next, let's go to the monastery. Let's go grab another monk. Only one more of those guys left. Lastly, let's go to the village. Let's snag our la uh, another trader and move up that track. 
Now we can get a level two place tile. This is the well tile. The nice thing about the well tile is, if I put a monk and a boatman here, I can activate any spot on my board once for free, just using those two. So I could do a wagon or a ship or I could do a university, whatever. All I need is a monk and a boatman. And hey, I have a lot of those. Next, let's move to round 12. So once again, we have another harvest. Just like before, a grain, a wine, or a wheat, I just said grain, cheese, there we go. Or we have to give up five coins. And we definitely don't want to give up five coins. We have to be able to give up 25 more coins. I have six. Yeah, I know. I'm not going to win this one. But that's okay. It still shows you how the game plays, and I'm having fun. I hope you guys are too. For round 12, I should be able to do the ship action, the wagon action, and the market stand. So let's do the ship action first. This is going to allow us to move our merchant to Mont Richard. And we get a slice of cheese. Next, let's do our wagon. Doing our wagon action lets us get to Loch. And we get a piece of wool. Now Loch is where we need to create a trading post. So that guild hall hopefully is in the future. Alright, last but not least, the market stand. Here we're going to sell our brocade and our wool for nine coins. Nine plus six is fifteen. Only ten more. So at the end of this round, we have to give up grain, cheese, or wine. There's our grain. Round thirteen. We only have two more rounds, you guys. And I hate this round. Storm. We can't use shipping or wagons. This is going to be super tight, but we're going to activate three different spots, the guild hall, the university, and the well. So let's first do the guild hall. The guild hall allows us to place one of our trading posts in Lach. That means we have now completed our second or our third objective, but objective number two. So let's place our third red token on it. Only two more impossible objectives left. Next, let's activate the university. We can grab a scholar, move up the track, and that means we're going to be able to move up four spaces on the development track. And with that, you get four coins. That puts our total to 19 coins. We only need six more. Next, let's activate the well. When we do this, we're going to activate the university again. Doing the university again is going to allow us to grab another scholar, move up the track, and get five more development points. One, two, three, four, five. That means we're at level four for development, and we get four more coins. I've got a five here. Given my one of my ones, I have a total of 23 coins. I need two more coins, you guys. Just two more. The worst round known to man. Banishment. After I draw all of my workers, I have to take two of them and put them back in my bag. So this round, I'm only going to have five workers to work with. Here we have our seven workers for our final round. <laughs> I'm going to give up the scholar and the knight because four of those of the five now are wild, and I know I'm doing something with that trader. So let's go and see what I'm gonna do. Okay, you guys, we're gonna get so close here. We're activating the guild hall, the market stand, and the well. So let's do the well. The action we're gonna do is the wagon action. This wagon action is gonna allow us to move to Chanot. I have no idea if I said that right, but we're gonna get this wool as well. Next, let's activate our guild hall. Let's place a trading post in Chanon. Last but not least, let's activate that market stand. We're going to sell that piece of cheese for two bucks. You know what that means. We have 25 coins. Here's our 25 coins. 
and we completed objective four. Only one more to go. Unfortunately, we ran just a little short. We have two citizen tiles, which kind of hurt. We need more than that. Plus the two trading posts, that's four. Okay, and then we're gonna multiply that four times those four coins up there, that's the development track state stat we're at, because we're at four. So four times four is 16. We needed 28. So we were 12 victory points away from winning this. Oh, so close. But as you can see, it's a lot of fun. I actually have never played it that way. I did totally a different type of strategy in this one. I went and got a couple farmers. I usually never get farmers in this one. So lots of fun, tons of replayability. I've played this, I think, 10 times almost. Just this scenario, and I have only won once. I couldn't replicate it after I won it the one time I did. I wanted to replicate it so that I knew what I could do on this playthrough to show you guys. Can't do it. I don't know what I did. Maybe I even cheated. Who knows? <laughs> but hope you guys enjoy it and be on the lookout for the final scenario, solo scenario. I think that one's called the Traveling Salesman. That one is also a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and I will talk to you guys later.